Hello and welcome to Totally Doctor Who. Now, it's at this part of the show I like to have an in-depth conversation with Liz about the last episode that we saw. Hey, weren't them TVs weird? And what about The Wire? How scary was she? You'd be forgiven for thinking that every time you watch TV you get your face sucked off. It was horrible, wasn't it? Which is, of course, what I would talk to Liz about right about now, but she's not here. Hello, pretty boy. <gasps> Aren't you the clever one? Are you, are you The Wire? I'm Liz, and I want to gobble you up. Oh, Liz. Nice disguise. You had me filled for a second. It looks very nice. Nice hairdo as well. Mm, you think? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's fun being inside the telly, but <sighs> I'm actually in. I'm just not quite sure how to get out. I might need a bit of a hand. Barney? Barney, are you there? <sighs> oh, OK. Start the show without me. I may be some time. Rory Jennings, a.k.a. Tommy Connolly, is in to talk telly. We do a bit of time travelling of our own as we find out about the history of TV and Doctor Who. And in Companion Academy, it's time the cadets showed us they can fit right in. Oh, hello, you made it back then? Yes, no thanks to you. Hello, Mr Bond. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was trying to help you out, I can't find the remote. Yeah, right. Otherwise I would have... Oh, hang on, I've got it, oh. I've got it. I was trying to do this. Hey, it's Tommy. Hello. Tommy, hey, hello. hello. It's like he's in the room with us, isn't it? It's fantastic. <gasps> Actually, Barney, he is in the room with us. <laughs> Welcome to Totally Rory. Hello, Rory. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. How are you? Yeah, good. Cheers. Welcome. Yeah. Okay, have a week. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic episode this week, mate. Absolutely brilliant. It really Jeez. was. Now, of course, you're Rory. You play Tommy. Before we ask you any questions, let's take a look at you in action. New monarch, new age, new world. No room for a man like Eddie Connolly. That's right. He deserves it. Tommy, go off, Graham. What for? He's your dad. He's an idiot. You look so different, I can't get over it. Oh, thank you. Thank you're, you. you're actually 22 <laughs> in real life, aren't you? But you're playing, is it 15? Oh, yeah, 15. How does that happen when you go for a casting? I don't know, really. It's, I think I've always just looked young. Sort of, like... It's quite help helpful because I'm quite immature, I think. It's sort of, uh, <laughs> just, it yeah, it sort of helps well. me out like a 15-year-old. It's no effort at all. Now, your character rebels against his dad. What were you like as a youngster? Were you naughty? No, no, no. I was well-behaved. Always been well-behaved. I don't know if my mum and Nan would agree, but uh, <laughs> I've always been good. So tell me about the relationship with your dad in the show. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. It's, uh, it's hostile. I think there's love there and that, but it's... Um, it was, uh, yeah, there's a lot of shouting and a lot of like, hostility. I would have said there was more shouting than love, that's for sure. Have a look at this. All the warnings I've given you, and every time, every time, you disobey me. Well, we can't just lock her away. Excuse me, sunshine, I am talking. I am talking! It's that line, isn't it? I am talking. Yeah. When you're acting in that kind of situation, you've got somebody in your face shouting like that, regardless of how well you know them off screen, it must be really intimidating. Especially when it's Jamie. It's well, like, yeah. yeah, really scary. He's there. He's just like right there all the time screaming at me. So did you have to do much work acting? Because, I mean, I would have been genuinely scared. No, I was scared. scared. I was watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah you I didn't like it, did you? No, I really didn't no, like it. No, I was genuinely all. scared. He's, he's like a daunting fellow. He's a top bloke. Like, he's a really nice man. A Tottenham fan, though. But, oh, uh, oh, never mind. Oh, Tottenham yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, one's <laughs> perfect, mate. So, <laughs> so you obviously had a laugh then. You did get on. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, he's top. I've I spent that. Like, I still chat to him now and again and that. He was a... Uh, we had a really good, really good relationship. He was hysterical. Like, he had me and the lady who played my mum, Deborah. He had us in stitches all the time. Well, we've got some people who are going to come in now and ask you some questions. Hopefully not too oh, much excellent. spraying going on. Yeah. Um, Josh and Denise, hello. Couple Welcome of little fans. Show. Hi, come and make yourselves comfy. Hi, Josh. Um, Hi. Josh, Hi. are you all right? Yeah. You've got are a you? question Hi. for Rory. Fire away, Josh. In your episodes, you're quite close to your nan. Are you in real life? Yeah, yeah, I am. Well, I live with my nan. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I live, I live with my nan. So, uh, so yeah, we've always, we've always been close. That's not to say I wouldn't like the telly to suck her face off now and again. <laughs> but, uh, but now I'm only joking. I'm joking, joking now. Yeah, yeah, I'm only joking. Denise, yeah, what's your it. question? Have you always wanted to be an actor? I have, yeah. I've, well, I was sort of lucky enough. I've, uh, I was an actor from quite a young age. So, um, yeah, I've always, I've always really enjoyed it. And I've been fortunate enough recently, you know, for, for sort of be able to carry on from when I was about, I think, from when I was about 10. How, how about that. being a game show host? Could you do that? Couldn't. I couldn't. No, I don't think I could do it, but how, uh, how I could try. Maybe presenting a top competition on Totally Doctor Who. I could Who try. I don't Who know how good I'd be in it, but well, I'll I could tell you try. What, can you stick around and do that a bit later? I'd love to. Fantastic. I'd love to, yeah. Well, thanks for answering the questions, and thanks for yeah. asking the questions, guys. Thank you for coming in. It's lovely stuff. Now, I have a question for you, Liz. Okay. 
How do you think we got here? Well, personally, I got the train, then a car, then I did a bit of No, work. no, no, I don't mean your journey. I mean, how did we get here to the year 2006 and make programmes like Doctor Who? You've got that look, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Which means we're about to find out. Watch and learn, darling. In the 1950s, there wasn't any Doctor Who. In fact, there was barely any TV at all. Imagine that. But on June the 2nd, 1953, a single event transformed the popularity of television. Over 20 million viewers saw the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II live from Westminster Abbey. Children's TV was also getting going. Andy Pandy and Bill and Ben were watched across the land. Plus, one TV show very familiar to you and me, Blue Peter. Swinging 60s and children were taking over television. And on November the 23rd, 1963, there was a truly momentous occasion. The first ever transmission of Doctor Who. The first Time Lord was played by William Hartnell and from then on, Saturday evenings would never be the same again. <laughs> it's all very interesting. Yes, that's very, 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 very interesting. 1966 saw the first regeneration when Patrick Troughton took over as the Doctor. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. In the 1970s, fashion wasn't the only thing to go Technicolor, so did TV. Colour transmission started and the golden age of television had begun. Doctor Who entered this colourful new decade with the flamboyant John Pertwee. Frilly shirts, an action-packed lifestyle and lots of fancy gadgets. Look, if you cannot reverse the energy drain, the fabric of the entire universe could be torn apart. And by 1974, it was time for another regeneration and the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, and his legendary scarf. I possess the key to time. Doctor, are you all right? Well, of course I'm all right, but suppose I wasn't all right. <sighs> now, this thing makes me feel in such a way, I'd be very worried if I felt like that, if I was somebody else feeling like this about that, do you understand? The 1980s saw big hair and even bigger changes when the Doctor regenerated three times. In 1982, Peter Davidson became the fifth and youngest Doctor and brought with him dashing looks and a love of cricket. <laughs> Hit children's shows of the year included Going Live, Why Don't You and Johnny Briggs. In 1984, Colin Baker exploded onto the screen as the sixth and most outrageous of the Doctors. His costume was as brash as his temperament. The big TV events of the 80s were Live Aid, EastEnders, and the marriage of the Prince of Wales to Lady Diana Spencer. At the end of the 80s, Sylvester McCoy regenerated into the seventh Doctor. In the 90s, TV did some growing up. The arrival of digital technology and the internet meant big changes for broadcasting. And in 1996, Paul McGann played the eighth Time Lord in just one movie adventure. And so to all the zeros, the 2000s. The Doctor had a new companion in Rose Tyler. Rob. And Christopher Eccleston took on the mantle of being the ninth Doctor. And that brings us to 2006. Rose is still the Doctor's feisty companion, and now the tenth Doctor, David Tennant, battles some ferocious enemies. Yep but I do it brilliantly. It's great to be able to look back, isn't it? How it used to be. It's actually amazing how different things were then to how they are now. Yeah. And just to show you just how different things were, take a look at this. We want muffins, everybody sing. We want muffins, the muse. Oh, there you are. What are you doing with that enormous ladder? It's a bit of a different presenting style, really, isn't it? You know, Slightly. Otherwise, I mean, we would say something like, um, hello, children, welcome to Totally Doctor Who. My, it's fun. <laughs> it doesn't really work, does it? I don't know, I quite like that. Well, you would. But they'd never let you on the telly in them days. No, far too scruffy. Mm-hmm, I think so. But it wasn't just telly that was different. There was no computer games, no DVDs, no CDs to listen to. So what did children do in the 1950s to have fun? 
Well, it's funny you ask that question because really? we're about to find out. This is something that you might have seen in the playground in the 1950s, mostly played by girls. Now, to some of you, it might look a little bit strange, and to some of you, you might recognise it. It is called French skipping, and the idea is to complete a set of moves over the elastic without falling over or messing it up, and then the elastic gets higher and higher up the leg. So Denise is having a go. What's it like? Pretty hard, but I like it. It looks very difficult, I have to say. Chloe, what do you think? It's the kind of thing I like to play in school. Yeah, really? Well, it's great. I wonder what fun and games Barney's up to. Well, there are certain games that are for boys and certain games that are for girls, and, and marbles was definitely a boys' game. Eric, tell us how you play it. Um, you use your marbles, you flick them to knock out the um, opponent's marbles out of the circle, and the person with... Marbles at the end is the winner. OK, the person with the most marbles. OK, and Thomas, tell us a bit about the skill that you think is needed to play the game. Uh, quite a bit. So what, what sort of techniques do you have? Is it just all in the flicking? Because you've, you've got to do some quite hard and some quite soft, haven't you? Yeah. OK, and uh, Josh, a quick prediction from you. Who do you think is going to win out of all three of you? Me. Confidence. <laughs> I like it. So there you go, that's marbles, Liz. You might not have seen this before. This is called hoop and stick, but the hoop is made out of wood. What is the aim of the game, Jake? You put the stick on the hoop and you try and get it as far as you can. Oh, OK. Uh, that does look quite difficult. Shall I have a go? Right. You hold it for me. Thank you very much. Ready? Here we go. Oh, oh beginner's good. luck. Beginner's luck. Thank Not you. bad. <laughs> but uh, I also like playing hopscotch, Barney. Well, it just so happens I'm over here by the hopscotch bit. There you go, Jake. Well held, sir. So uh, Morgan's going to show us how to do it. Beanbag goes down first. You become the queen. And now Ellie. Beanbag changes position, hop, skip, and there you go. Looks so easy, doesn't it? Can I have a go at doing it? Yeah. yeah? Great. Now, I'm a boy, you see, so we do it differently. What I do is I take the beanbag, throw it over my head, run all the way up to the end, and there you go, I'm king! Is that how it works? No? Really? Well, that's no good. Is it just a game for girls, though? No, boys can play as well. Oh, OK, and do you think I became a worthy king? No. Why? Because he cheated. Yeah, but I'm a boy and boys cheat, don't they? So maybe that's why. What do you think, Liz? I think there would definitely be no cheating in Companion Academy. True. But there is a lot of dressing up. Last time on Companion Academy, our cadets had to wear their hearts on their sleeves and stand up for themselves. I think I should stay because I did very well on the mousetrap game. I put the word together very accurately. Um, I'm going to give it all my best, all I've got. I do look quite nervous. I never let that stop me. They might think that I did really well on the challenges. I'd ask you to keep me in. I think the judge's decision like was hard to yeah, make. We have to eliminate someone. And that someone was Adam. <gasps> it's OK. Now only five cadets remain to face a new task and they are all expected to fit right in. Cadets, the doctor always looks sharp in his pinstripe suit. But if you go time travelling in a hoodie, don't be surprised if you're mistaken for a kung fu monk. For this task, you must show the judges that you can go unnoticed and not look out of place wherever you end up. Cadets, you must dress to impress 1950s style by picking the outfit you think would stop you sticking out like a sore thumb down at the Bebop Hop. The judges have supplied the wardrobe. All you have to do is take pride in your appearance and fit right in. It's great to see them all grinning from the, mm. from the start rather than dreading what's going to happen. <laughs> Let's rock and roll, cadets. I think Chris has actually <laughs> chosen the blancmange think, rather than a dress. Oh, I think the blancmange is easy. <laughs> That's a bit right. tight, I think, for yeah. Jamie, isn't it? <laughs> Kyra's going to help Louise there. Oh, no. Oh, they're well, they're helping each they're other. They're helping so each other. That's good. I think Alex has found is... the coolest jacket of them all. Is that Oh, what it is? but I think he's putting it back now. Oh. That's... Oh. <laughs> Very good. I believe you the glory you will never let me out at all. I believe you the glory you will never let me out at all. Jamie, what? What's up the chair? What are those <laughs> eggs from the other week's task? <laughs> 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 Alex, 
Alex hasn't <laughs> rock kind of started. Yes! <laughs> yes! Well, well, well done, James. Well done, James. Yeah, yeah. You did. Yeah, yeah. He's got so much gel on, it's dripping down his face. Oh, I see. You wanted a white T-shirt, Alex yeah. did. You wanted to go for the full phones. Yeah. Ten seconds, cadets. Ooh. Oh, come on, Alex. Seconds. You've really got to start working hard now. <laughs> I think that looks great. Time up, cadets. Well, I, th I think for me, um, Louise came out favourite there. She was really generous with her help and her time to everyone else when she needed it for herself. They were all them. really helpful to each other, yeah, weren't they? Yeah, we they, they were. This week, the judges have decided that no one made a fashion faux pas. You will all stay to fight another day at the Academy. So no one's gone. There are still five cadets left in the Companion Academy. Find out how they get on next week right here. Now, Rory, I'd like to introduce you to a very special part of the studio. Would you walk this way with me a second? Oh, yeah. Now, you know how the TARDIS is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside? Yep. Well, we have something very similar here in the Totally Studio, and it's this. It looks very small, but if you just pull that handle there, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep going. It'll go some more yet. This is the Totally Filing Cabinet, the TARDIS <laughs> of the organised world. Now, oh, I tell you what, there's some great stuff in here. Look at that. Remember the last episode? Who was in there? The lady off the telly? The Wire. She was scary. And look, we've even got the helmets that Rose and the Doctor wore. I'll wear the pink one. You whack the white one on. Sound good? Yep. You've already pulled something out, you're keen. What yeah. is that? Can you show us? Yeah, I found something which is from Rebecca in Scotland. It's, uh, it's a sonic high-tech future device. Nice. It uh, has a laser that can melt anything and the TV computer with all the memory in the world. That's a lot of memory, isn't it? It's a lot of memory. How small is Rose Tyler's head? <laughs> this is the most uncomfortable helmet I think I've ever had to put on. Uh, let's take a look at what else you've been sending in here. Oh, now they look scary. I'm sure there's a little card that goes with them. What are they? These, Rory, are clockwork monster dolls. Caroline, Lizzie and Miriam have sent these in, uh, and they've used a bit of clay there to, to stick over the face. And the monster under your bed. That little head turn thing is very scary. Very nice. Thank you for those girls. Um, what else have we got in here? Oh, a nice little poem by Declan. I can read a few lines because it's like nine hours long. Um, Doctor Who is a great adventure drama filled with monsters like the Slavine or even the Cybermen or the Autons. However, there are many more to be seen. The Daleks are the Doctor's biggest enemy. They come in colours like red, silver and gold. They come from a huge worldwide family, but there are many stories to be told. It goes on, but it's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Declan. Lovely stuff. What have you found? It's a, it's a Doctor it's Who Daniel banner. in Scotland, yeah, it's a Doctor Who uh, thing. It's a do <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, the official title. Please send us more <laughs> things for the Totally Filing Cabinet. You can stick them in here. And you will get yourself a Totally Doctor Who mug. Like that? I do. Want one? Plenty. No. Oh. Get in touch. Here's the email address, totallydoctorwho at bbc.co.uk. Or you can send us your stuff via the old-fashioned way, which apparently is called snail mail, but please don't send us snails. The address <laughs> is totallydoctorwho, PO Box 5158, CF5 9BD. <laughs> Here's a bit of advice from me to you. Wherever you're going, take a brolly with you, because you never know when it's going to rain. Having said that, there are some people who can make it rain whenever they want to. Have a look. All aboard! Oh, but this is a brilliant year! Classic! In the Idiot's Lantern, the Doctor and Rose find themselves in 1950s London. But in reality, the city streets are in Cardiff in 2006. And that means a lot of work to get everything looking authentic. We've got quite a big, big um, party scene to shoot for the end of the episode. We're also doing some CGI work, so the street looks twice as long and twice as big. So it's going to take us quite a long time. And there's one important scene that can only be filmed much later in the day. It's the very opening shot of the episode where we crane down off the, off the TV aerials um, and through into somebody's window and it's a stormy night in, at the beginning of 1953. For that we have to have quite a lot of rain effects because obviously it, we can't rely on it raining. So it's out with the bunting and in with the heavy duty machinery as the physical effects team move in. And with them they bring something to help make everything wet. Very wet indeed. That's called a Bowser, and basically it's just full of water. 
Uh, it was a concrete pumping machine, which has been converted to uh, you know, a film rain machine. On, on the back of the machine there's a, a pump which is capable of you know, pumping 2,000 litres per minute or thereabouts. That's taken up, up the arm uh, into the spray bar, which has got about five or six industrial type spray nozzles on it. Uh, it makes a very effective rain machine. But it's not just about rain falling on the actors and cameras. The effects crew have to make sure that the whole location looks weather beaten. There's obviously limitations for the, you know, the, the depth of rain you can give with this uh, overhead rain arm. So the old trick is to uh, wet down you know, as far as you can see as well, which we've, we've done with an old converted um, fire truck. So we've probably laid, you know, approaching 10,000 litres of water onto the road. But will the end result go down a storm? Believe me, you'll be glued to the screen. OK, it's competition time once again right now. Now, if you like competitions, if you like Doctor Who, and you're going to be watching this week's episode, then this is the competition for you, is it not? It is. We have a Dalek keyring and a Dalek T-shirt for you. Very nice. All you've got to do is answer a question that is based on this week's episode. Have you got the question? I have. The question is, in which storage area does the TARDIS land? As easy as that. So your powers of observation are key. Eyes peeled, whatever that means. Sounds painful to me. So here are the addresses you need to send your entries to. The first one is the snail mail address. Totally Doctor Who, PO Box 5158, CF59BD. Or you can email us at this address. It's totally Doctor Who at bbc.co.uk. Get your entries in by the 6th of June, please. And best of luck. These could be yours. How long are your fingernails? They're going to be a lot shorter very shortly. It's time for this. We test your Doctor Who knowledge to find out who will reign as the who Roo. We want to know your three best Doctor Who facts, and that'll get you here to the Totally Studio. And this week, we've been impressed by two people. The first to welcome is De Graft. Welcome to the show. Nice to see you. Yeah. How are you feeling? Nervous. So who is your favourite Doctor Who? Uh, David Tennant. David Tennant. OK. And okay. who is he playing against? You're playing against week? Chris, De Graft. Hello, Chris. Hi. Favourite Doctor? John Pertwee. Nice choice. And well, now we know that, we know a bit more about each other. Let me explain the rules to you, OK? Against the clock, you're going to be answering Doctor Who-related questions. You're going to have 90 seconds to answer as many as you can. For each question that you get right, you're going to get one point. And the person with the most points at the end of the game is the who -roo. Would you please welcome a TV addict who is a real bright spark? It is Rory Jennings, a.k.a. Tommy. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello, Rory. Hello, Hello. Hello. So you've got something personal to you you're going to be giving away in this, I yes? I have. So it's this. It's this picture of, um, which I'll, uh, I'll sign for the winner a bit later on. Brilliant. It's okay. a picture of you in Doctor Who. There's even the sonic screwdriver there. So it's not just the Huru title that you want to win. You also want to win this. Like I said before, 90 seconds. The time will start when you ask your first question, Rory. The graph's going to go first, OK? Do you want to say what it's time for now? The Huru. With what kind of food are the Krillitings brainwashing the schoolchildren? Chips. Correct. In the Christmas episode, what kind of fish were being used to hunt the Doctor down? Pilot fish. Correct. What does the Doctor name the horse in the episode with the clockwork droids? Pass. Arthur. What do the Welsh words Blythe Droog mean from the last series? Bad wolf. Correct. What does the actress Elizabeth Sladen play in the episode set in school? Ger no, Sarah Jane Smith. Well done. well done. In the episode with Charles Dickens from the last series, what are the aliens called? The Gauth. Correct. In the first episode with us, Levine, Rose and the Doctor are escorted in a limousine to where? Pass. Oh, 10 Downing Street. In the episode set in wartime London, what does the Doctor order the children with that gas mask to do? Go to their rooms. Correct. In the goal in the fireplace, what age are the clockwork droids waiting for Renette to reach before they can take her brain? Uh, pass. Ooh, 37. In the first episode of the last series, Jackie is trapped by the Autons, who are preparing to shoot her. But what are they wearing? By the grounds. Yes. In the episode, The End of the World, what's, what name... If you're out of time, you can carry on. 
in the episode The End of the World, what's the name of the space station that the Doctor and Rose are on? Uh... Take a guess if you want to. Bad Wolf? Oh, nearly. Platform one. Oh, do you know what? I make that 5-2 to Chris. It well is. done, oh. you are. The Huru. <laughs> How do you feel? Fantastic. Well, well done, mate. You've got yourself that picture yes. as signed by Rory, which you can sort out for us now. Already? But the graph, you're not going away empty handed, no. mate. You've got yourself some CBBC goodies there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well done, play. Absolutely. Well done, mate. You played very well. Well done, both of you. And uh, some there for you as well, Chris. Thank you. All right, mate. Well done. You are the Huru. <laughs> Woohoo! The Huru. And join us again next time for more Huru. Well, that's all we've got time for on another week here at Totally, but there's one more thing before we go, isn't there? You are right, Barney, because we have got time just to have a little sneaky peek at the next episode of Doctor Who, and I can't wait. Who wants to watch it? Do you want to watch Yay! it? Yeah! Well, we are comfy on the sofa, but I think for this one we need to go behind the sofa. Is that scary? Yes. Roll it. I'm behind you, Toby. I'm right behind you. Don't look, don't look at me. One look and you will die. I'm reaching out, Toby. I'm so close. Don't turn around. Oh, I can touch you. <gasps> very scary. Make sure you're watching Saturday, BBC One. Thank you very much to all of our guests today, Rory, and all of our Doctor Who fans. Thanks for coming in. One more thing to say before we go. We're totally Doctor Who. Are you? Say goodbye. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. Next time, he's going to be the Ood One Out, as a very odd guest makes a special appearance in the studio. We go behind the scenes with Noel Clark, a.k.a. Mickey Smith, filming a TARDIS ode. Scooty, actor Miana Burring and cameraman Mike Valentine talk about how they shot some fantastic underwater scenes. We'll see you then.